Hi, it's Kim and welcome to another process video. This video is for Embellish It and I am using 49 and Market Rouge collection. So what I've done here is this is my spray box, which is just a box that I got uh, online shopping sent to me in. And I have created a mask because I'm going to splatter in this background so this paper that I'm using that's in the box is Rouge Devoted it's quite a busy patterned paper but I love it it's the most gorgeous floral so what I'm going to do is use an acrylic ink and I am going to create a splattered area on this background paper and then I'm going to build my photo and embellishment clusters onto this splattered area. Now you could use watered down acrylic paint, you could use um, the glossy spray. So there's lots of things that you could use to do the splattering with. Whatever you do white splattering with normally, you can do this. I've just used kitchen towel or paper towel to mask off the area um, that I want to principally concentrate my splatters in. So I'm, I've just sped the video up here, so it looks like I'm splattering super fast, but I'm only splattering at normal speed just with faster video. Um, so you can see that I'm trying to get quite a dense splatter. And now removing the masked area, you can see that the white splatter is in that rectangle at the bottom. And now I'm just softening, softening the edge by adding a few more splatters but just up along mainly the top edge just to soften that so that it's not too obviously squared off. Um, I also have splatters all over my arm, hand. Yeah, luckily I was wearing an apron, so it's not all over my dress as well. So you can see that this is my background. And when, when you see the close-up photos at the end of this video, you will be able to clearly see what a difference those white splatters make. Um, and I'm really happy with how that worked out. So I am playing with the Rouge Cluster Kit. Now these cluster kits, which I'm just showing you there, are awesome because there's a, a really nice selection of different embellishments in it. So you get some chipboard, you get some laser cuts, you get some string buttons, little clips, so there's lots of bits and pieces to play with. They also give you some ideas about how to use the elements that are in the cluster kit. So if you're not a confident, if you're not confident with regards to creating clusters, the pictures will help you. So I have two photos of myself and my friends, um, my best friends in Australia together at a boutique where we all tried the same dress on and then took photos. And I love these photos. So um, I'm also using the chipboard words from the Rouge collection. And in that kit, there's the word besties. So, and a word strip that says, this is us. So it was just perfect for these photos. And I am going to take inspiration from a couple of the clusters that are on the instruction sheet. And you will have seen that I had a look at those and I've put, put that... Um, instruction sheet or pictures, inspiration pictures up in front of me. And I am using the long one that's at the bottom, but it's actually got three framed elements and I'm making something similar, but with just two photos. And then I'm taking inspiration from one of the small cluster pieces and I'm going to add that into the bottom right-hand corner of the, of the larger cluster with the photos on it. So I'm just trying to pull a whole heap of different bits together at the moment and lay the layout out um, before I start sticking stuff down. And I am combining a combination of chipboard and the laser cuts and I will also add strings and buttons as well. So you can see me adding a whole heap of different elements from those cluster kits this such a great idea, as I said. So you get enough embellishments in there to create at least three layouts, like embellish at least three layouts, possibly more, depending on how many you like to use. You've got inspiration photos, and it really gives you a chance to play with some different types of elements without having to go and buy three or four different packets of stuff. 
So I'm reasonably happy with how this um, has come together and very shortly I will start pulling it apart in order to stick it back down but stick it down permanently. Uh, yep, so just some little fiddling just to make sure I'm happy with the composition. You can see that the busy pattern paper in the background, it's the main cluster is working with that pattern in the background so that it looks like the flowers come out from the top of those photos and continue up the page. And so that when I looked at that pattern paper, where I put the photos is exactly where my intuition with regards to composition told me to put it. So by putting the photos there, for me, it really works with that very busy cluster of flowers that is printed onto that background paper. So I am still going through various elements, pulling bits and pieces off. Um, I haven't followed exactly the inspiration photos, but as I said, they're giving me a starting point and that's where it can be good for yourself as well. So you don't have to follow it exactly or if you want to, you can. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just wrapping some of the very cute hot pink baker's twine around the bottom of the photos and just adhering that with a little bit of double-sided tape so it won't shift. And then I'm going to do that with the other photo as well. In the inspiration, they went around the whole lot, but um, I felt that it would be easier to manage just going around one photo at a time because I don't have the third frame in the middle. If you had all three frames attached together, then it would be easy to wrap around all three of them. I'm just putting some double-sided tape on the back of these framed photos so that they're ready to stick down and I've stuck the two stripy pieces at the back together so they're now attached to each other but they are not attached to the background paper. I really do like to create um, my elements separately if possible so that I can move them around and make sure I'm happy with where they are before I permanently attach them to the background paper. So just putting some of the elements onto those stripy pieces of um well, ephemera um, that I know are going to be layered under the photos and then I just stick everything down and then start sticking the various elements that are on top of the photos. Um, so I've got some little postage stamps there, which or everything that I've used has come out of that um, a cluster kit except for the title. Um, so I have a little chipboard piece with a laser cut heart there and one of the little clips that is in the kit. And I'm just going to put some foam tape behind this so that um, it can attach onto the frame. Now that piece is just one whole piece now, complete. And I'm going to stick a postage stamp in the middle to hide the gap between the two photos. And I've got a little laser cut butterfly there. And now I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of this. And then I will attach it down onto the background paper. But by having made it complete before sticking it onto the background, I can be confident that the finished design will be in the right place on the background paper. I'm now going to make up the little cluster that's in the bottom right of the photo. I'm doing a similar process, so making the cluster separate to the background paper and then I can stick that on exactly where I want it to be. Now, when I stuck the little leaves down, I decided that one of the leaves that were hidden underneath the tag, I tore off and I've just stuck it on top of, of a label there just so that it's got well, you couldn't see it. It was behind the big tag. So I've just pulled it off and stuck it on towards the front. I've put the end in underneath the edge of the tag. So it just also looks like it's coming out from the tag. Again, you'll see in the close-up image what that looks like. I've stuck down my chipboard butterfly and my little button. And now I'm just playing to see where exactly it should go. I, need, I know I need to prop it up a bit because obviously there's um, double-sided foam tape behind the 
um, photos and behind the large photo cluster. And so I need to build up that small cluster so that it sits level. And now I'm just going to tuck the string from the tag and then um, use the double-sided tape to stick that down. And now I'm working on the title. So I believe it was three levels of double-sided tape under that little tag in order to bring it up level with the photo and the frame, the photos and frame part. And now I'm just having two levels of double-sided tape onto this title just so that it is also raised up. Otherwise, it would look much lower than the photo elements and I want it to stand out a bit. So if by putting a little bit of double-sided tape, a couple of layers of double-sided tape, it pops up. And I'm going to do the same thing with the word strip. So what I do is I get my length of double-sided foam tape and I fold it in half and then I use that. So that gives me double the thickness. Now, my foam tape that I use is quite thin. If you're using a thicker foam tape, you might want to have less levels because I don't like to have my layouts too thick to go in my albums. So this layout does have a bit of dimension to it. Um, so you can see now that the titles all stuck down and the layout is now very close to being completed. I'm just checking to see whether there's anything else that I would like to add to it. And I'm looking at the clusters that are off the sheet and you can see that I have made that one down the bottom and the little one just above it and I've put that on the right side. So just showing you there. And now there's some close-ups of the finished layout. Thanks very much for joining me today. As I said, this layout was for Embellish It. They have all of these products from the 49 and Market Rouge collection available. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and um, please leave a comment. Also, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. All those steps really help promote my videos to other scrapbookers who might be interested in seeing how to use 49 and Market and the new cluster kits. So thank you again. And I should have some more videos coming up again shortly. Bye for now.